The purpose of this video is to discuss working with drawing grids in Intercalc 3D, but before we get to drawing grids, it's important to understand a little bit about how adding model geometry works in the program. So I have a very basic model set up that has a member and a few nodes out here in space, and let's just assume that the intent is to string some members along those nodes. So I can activate the Add Members tool, and then I can hover over an existing node. Notice the triangle that says the program snapped to that node. I can click and then start rubber banding to add a member. And if I get to another node, it snaps to that. And I can click to accept it, and the rubber banding continues. And that process is pretty easy. And then when I get to the end, I can right click, and that discontinues the rubber banding. Now that's easy enough to do if you have existing geometry in the model to snap to, but the obvious question is, what if I want to add some framing out here where there is no existing, uh, there are no existing elements? So this is where grids come in handy, and I've already set up a grid that I can turn on by going to the View tab, and then use this toggle grid display. So that's just a regular toggle. And here you can see the dots associated with the grid that I set up in the same plane as this row of beams. Now if I wanted to create another set of beams, I can hover over any of these dots on the grid. And notice that when I, when I get that snap triangle, if I look down here on the status bar, I'll get an exact coordinate readout of that actual position. So that's really helpful if I want to be precise about where I'm placing a new node or a new member. So once it's snapped to a grid location, I can click and then I rubber band from that location. It's actually created a node and now I'm working on creating a member and I can come up to any other node in the grid and snap to it and then click. Now I've added a member and it continues to rubber band and there's no reason why I can't come over to any of these nodes and snap as well and then I can right click to discontinue. So that's how grids can be used to add members in locations where there isn't existing framing. Now one important thing to understand about grids is that they don't move the existing framing with them, or to say it another way, the existing framing that depended on the grid location for their initial placement, that framing doesn't move if the grids move. So let's talk a little bit about what we can do with creating and positioning and rotating these grids. That was the drawing grid setup icon that I used. And then in this dialog, we can see that we have control over the number and spacing of the rows of dots that would get created in each of the three global axis directions. The syntax is up here, so 5 at 0.5 creates five spaces, space 0.5 feet apart, and so on. Um, to demonstrate the point that the framing isn't attached, let's just modify one of these values slightly, and then I'll say OK, and you can see that the grid definitely moved, but the framing did not. Now back to grid setup. If I wanted to, I could reset that grid location. Um, we could also do some things like rotating the grid into a different plane. And then if I window out, there's the new grid. And grids can take the form of a line if you only define one row. So that's useful at times. Or as you've seen, we can define them as a plane. And there's even nothing that says that you couldn't define them as a cube or a three-dimensional grid. That just gets really difficult to see and to figure out where you've actually snapped to. The last thing that's of importance with grid setup is the fact that you can change those insertion points, which we've seen, but also the rotation. So if you wanted to make some sort of a grid that's on a skew, you can certainly do that as well. And then just remember that 
If you ever are done with the grid or if it's in the way, you can just come up to the toggle grid display button on the view tab and turn it off.